Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're going to build up and install the front axles on the Tamiya Wrecker. They're the same old front axles used on all the other Tamiya trucks, but we still need to get them right so the steering and suspension works nicely. The plan today then is to work through all of bag B in one go. Okay, so there's only five steps and a fair amount of the bag is a repeat of itself with the two axles but it's the thought that counts. In the bag then we have the metal axles, leaf springs and four parts bags. There's the fake dampers, lots of step screws, u-bolts and miscellaneous screws and nuts. Once decanted into the pudding pots we can get step 11 underway. Right, step 11, suspension bits. This is a make two scenario, so we'll build up one axle on video and magic up the other one when we need it. For this step, we'll need the axles and the fake damper bodies. There's only two though, as the other front ones get made up later in the build. For the rest of the bits, there's the eight U-bolts, four spring seats, two damper springs, four damper mounts, two black O-rings, two damper shafts, four M3 by six screws, 16 M3 nylock nuts, and four leaf spring packs. From the tools bag, we'll need the ceramic grease, which just leaves the two C3s, the rod ends for the dampers. First then, we'll put the dampers together so they're done and out of the way. So we can get the shaft and spring in, we'll need to unscrew the tops. They're not really proper dampers, so there's no seal to worry about so they just come straight off. So they run nicely and don't squeak. We're going to pop a blob of grease on the shaft, then slide on one of the O-rings. Now, not all the Tamiya trucks use an O-ring, so I assume they're there to shorten the damper a little. A little bit more grease on the other side of the O-ring, just to make sure, and we can insert the shaft into the body and push the O-ring past the thread. Again, they're not sealed dampers, so we don't need to worry too much about the threads damaging the O-rings. Just stuff it in there. To fit the rod end, we use a screwdriver to hold the shaft still while we screw on the rod end. They should thread on until the thread bottoms out, but it can be a bit difficult to feel though, so be careful you don't strip out the plastic. Generally, there's going to be about half a millimetre or so of the thread still visible. Now the spring goes in and the top gets screwed back on. Do it up by hand so it's nice and tight. It's all aluminium so the parts will bite quite nicely. You shouldn't need to use any tools to get them tighter. Make a second and that's them ready to fit. We're making two axles so we'll split up all the bits into two sets. Two damper mounts, two spring seats, four U-bolts, two leaf springs and an axle. OK, on the axle near the ends, there's two square bits where we need to sit the leaf packs. They sit on there with the rivet sat in a hole. Over the spring, we need to hang the two U-bolts so they run along the side of the square bits on the axle. And the tricky bit now, we need to hold it all together and flip the axle over so we can pop the threaded bits of the U-bolts through the holes in the spring seat. The hole in the middle should line up with a nub on the axle. Now while still holding it all together we thread on a nylock nut on each of the threads. Thread them on by hand so you're just hitting the nylock part of the nut on all four. Then we go corner to corner and tighten them up a little bit at a time until they're just taking up the slack. We still want to leave it so we're able to move the spring pack on the axle just so we can line everything up on the chassis in the next step. Of course, the axle needs two springs, so we'll install the other one too. Next, we have the damper mounts to fit. These use the M3x6s, which thread straight into the metal axle, so we're going to need to use some thread lock. We'll use a spot on a cocktail stick and stick it in a hole and stir it around. Now we offer up one of the mounts with a screw and thread it in. For now, we're going to leave it loose so the leaf spring can still move around on its mount. As long as we don't hang around before nipping it up, it's still going to work just fine. Repeat on the other side, and that's one axle ready to fit. The other one is identical, so here it is, also ready to fit. 
Step 12, fitting the front axle. We're going to need the dampers and an axle, two M3 by 15s, six 3 by 14 step screws, six M3 nylocks, two M3 flange nuts, two damper collars, and the chassis. Right, we need to slot the leaf springs into the mounts and shackles on the chassis. Now, because we left the nuts on the plates loose, they should go in without any fuss. As we slot them in, we can pop in one of the step screws from the outside. To keep them in, we just need to fit one of the nylocks on each of the step screws. Three of them are simple enough, but the one by the servo saver can be a bit tricky to get at. The kit comes with a spanner, but you'll need some pliers to get it started. Or, if you have a set of parallel jawed pliers, then it's very easy. Otherwise, a set of needle nose pliers to get the nut on the thread, then use the spanner from the kit while doing it up. Next, the dampers can go on. At the top, we use the long screw and a collar to space it off from the plate. Then we use one of the flange nuts on the inside to keep it in place. These will get well and truly buried under the bodywork and chassis, so we'll use some thread lock on the nuts just to make sure they can't come loose. Then tighten the screw and nut. At the bottom, the rod ends slot into the mount and we use another step screw from the outside with a nylock nut on the end. Repeat on the other side and that's all the bits on, but we still need to tighten up the spring seat nuts. Cycle the suspension a few times to get the springs to find their natural position. Then, just like before, we'll go corner to corner, tightening up the nuts all the way until they bottom out. You should end up with a nice, smooth, slightly loose setup. If you tighten up the nuts as you build the axle, you can end up with some awkward binds that will cause some premature wear, along with some annoying squeaks and creaks. Now, step 13. This one is near enough exactly the same as step 12, except we don't have any dampers to fit and the axle fits with the damper mounts towards the back. So here we have it fitted, ready to go. Very nice. Step 14, the uprights. For plastic we have two E8s and two E10s. Now as you clip them out, position them so you know which is which to save any confusion later. Left to right we have an 8 and a 10, then another 10 and an 8. For metal bits we have 6 M3 plane nuts and 6 5mm ball ends. Essentially what we want to do is match up the uprights with the diagram and fit a ball end in the right hole with a nut. The bit to keep in mind is because these are plane nuts we're going to have to use a little bit of thread lock too, but we need to be really really careful not to get any on the plastic. Using the spot on the end of the thread technique works well. We'll pop a spot near the end of the thread, then unscrew the ball end so the thread lock gets into the nut. Then thread it back in and nip it up. To tidy up, we'll mop up any excess with a paper towel. Repeat with the other three and they're ready to go. Step 15, attaching the uprights. We'll need the four upright shafts, four kingpins and four two millimeter eclips. From the previous bag we need the two long and two very short rods and the chassis. To assemble we put one of the shafts into an upright, add some grease to the hole and sit it in the end of the axle. The only thing to watch out for is that you get the right upright on the right end of the right axle, otherwise it's plain sailing. To attach it we use one of the kingpins which has a slot at one end for an e-clip. We want to insert it from the top of the chassis, which is the bottom as we see it here, as of course the chassis is upside down. Then we clean up the grease and clip in an e-clip. The upright should be very free to turn. If it's ever so slightly sticky, it'll most likely free up by itself. But if it's really grabby, you might want to pop it off again and find out why. I must say though, I've never come across a tight one. Usually they're all a bit loose, to the point of making the steering a bit sloppy. Fit the other three uprights and we can move on to the rods. Now it's just a case of clipping the long rods between the long bits of the uprights to link the sides. Then we use the short rods between the short bits of the uprights and the bell cranks. If they were put together to the manual, they should be pretty close to set up already with a tiny amount of toe out. Not to worry if they're a little bit out though, you're most likely never going to notice. 
and with the slop in the steering, a half a degree here or there is going to get lost in the system. When we modify the steering to reduce the slop, it is going to be worth tuning. For now though, this is going to do nicely. If we hook up the servo tester, we can see how it all works. There's a bit of excess travel, but it's not far off. The main thing to note is just how reduced the travel on the rear axle is. If we do end up with a twin steering servo setup, we'll have to put the system together with the same ratio in mind. Anyway, that's all of bag B complete. One set of axles built and fitted just as Tamiya intended. A bit different to the usual truck, yet still rather familiar. Great stuff. Right then, that's going to be it for this week. So, as always, thanks for watching. Like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!